What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Mind of Moon Dog DJ Moon Dog here. Let's talk about the bodega, bro, because everyone's talking about him on social media. He did something kind of dumb, and it ended up costing him a lot. Now, before we get into what exactly all that is, let me kind of give you a little bit of background here so we can kind of understand this a little bit better. So I want you to meet Griffin Green, a.k.a. the bodega, bro, that uh, has been named that by everyone on social media. All right. Now, he's from the Midwest from michigan i'm from the midwest i'm in chicago though major u.s city but apparently he's from michigan um possibly somewhere in the suburbs and or in a very rural area recently graduated college landed a job in tech about two months after finishing uh college and it required him to move to new york city so imagine moving from the midwest midwest upbringing uh in michigan and having to relocate to new york but 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 wait it's not like you're just going to maybe New York and go to like Manhattan, a very luxury and, you know, you kind of know what the Manhattan vibe is all about, right, y'all? No, you move to New York, but you end up in the boogie down Bronx. I mean, this is the birthplace of hip hop. So that's the setup that we got so far. I don't know why he decides to go to the Bronx, what he was expecting, but in the Bronx, it's a very large black and brown communities with, with, within that borough. And as a white guy from the Midwest moving over there, it's going to be a culture shock. Now, let's get into what exactly he did, because in his new adventures in the Bronx, New York, he decided to make a series of TikToks that got everyone upset. Okay, so I just moved to New York and I'm trying to go grocery shopping. And so I type in like grocery stores on my Apple Maps and like every one I go to, like I'm walking to like they're like this or like. Like this, like, bro, that's not a grocery store. Like, I'm trying to get, like, eggs, yogurt, like, cheese, like, shit like that, right? Like, look at this place. All right, let me take a moment here to kind of touch on this, right? Because some people may be familiar with bodegas or corner stores, um, and other people might not understand it. So let me let me give you a quick little uh, rundown, all right? In, in your black and brown communities, lower income, impoverished, you don't have these big box uh, grocery chain stores investing in these communities, setting up stores in there for them uh, so they can have all of the access to the basics, milk, bread, cheese, you get the idea. And so what we were relying on in these communities growing up, and, and for those of us that live in these communities, is we rely on the bodegas, the corner stores, right? They might not have everything, but they have a little bit of everything. And you can usually go there to find some essentials that you may need or that just things to get to survive off of. I mean, I still remember the days growing up, going to my local bodega and corner stores and running in to go get flaming Hots, pork rinds, all the stuff that's not necessarily the healthiest things to eat, but it was a place that you and your friends would meet, you would get stuff from, whatever you needed. It's, it's, it provides a way to, to thrive in these communities when you don't have the big box grocery uh, store chains there that are wanting to do it. They might not see it as, as uh, profitable. They might, they might be scared away because there's, you know, crime associated in these neighborhoods. And so that's a little bit of a rundown on like the whole importance and the idea of bodegas and corner stores. Let's continue. Hey, yo, Ak, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese. The Aki way. <laughs> like, you know those TikToks? Like, I'm, I'm fucking doing it. Yeah, th those TikToks, I'm pretty sure, are probably done by people of, like, of the culture. Uh, you kind of reciting it and, and kind of laughing at it. it. It doesn't come off well. It doesn't come off well. Like, I've literally been to, like, five of those now. <laughs> and, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm about to do for dinner. Like, where are the Kroger's and, like, the Whole Foods at? Like, I'm about to eat fucking... Well, as I said before, they're not in a lot of these communities because they might not see it as profitable. They're worried about the security of, of, of the store in these neighborhoods, you know, because of crime. It's a, it's a variety of reasons. At the end of the day, the people that live in these communities suffer because we have food deserts. It's all prevalent in the south side and west sides of Chicago. It, we see it all the time. Like, like cereal and ramen for dinner. Like, what the fuck? I mean, welcome to what it's like to be black or brown in the hood, right? Where you're fortunate to get that to to live off of. Listen, a lot was made about what he had to say. There were things from like Perez Hilton in here making quotes, uh, you know, saying things like he felt like it gave off racist vibes and all this kind of stuff. Um, there were other TikTokers that that made comments about this that that you know again insinuating that 
you know, this was very racist in, in what he said. But let me say this. I personally, after watching it and listening to everything he had to say, knowing a little bit about the background here, I don't. I don't feel like it was necessarily something racist. Now, it was super cringe, but what I really think this shows is his privilege. I mean, my man never had to probably suffer or um, had all kinds of opportunities afforded to him. So him going from Michigan to the Bronx and then talking about the bodegas and there's there's no food and where's the Whole Foods and, and, and the Kroger's, bro, that reeks of privilege, right? White privilege. That's That's exactly what it is right here. Now, I'm not mad at it myself. It is what it is. He's from a small Midwest city, probably, and he goes to New York. It's a culture shock. I mean, imagine he's over there overwhelmed by everything, the sights, the sounds, the smells of New York, right? And and so I think his TikToks about the bodegas came off bad, super cringe. Um, but this is where the story goes even further because the internet, as the internet does, dragged up more receipts um, and sent it to his employer. And that's where this ended up happening. He worked for a company called Outreach and they tweeted out and said he is no longer an employee of Outreach. Now, what the internet did here was they took the videos of him talking about, about the bodegas and they also dug further um, and found videos he posted where he shared confidential information about the employment offer, which probably had how much they were gonna offer him money. He posted that. That was a lot of the grounds for which outreach uh, terminated him. A lot of these companies, when they make you offers, it's, it's confidential. You're not meant to share that out publicly. Um, and so it doesn't seem like they, or they, at least they might have used that as justification to get rid of him uh, because the TikToks alone, I don't think would have warranted uh, being terminated. And now we're in a situation where you got two sides of the internet on this bodega, bro. It's got everyone talking. You've got the one side who's over here saying that what he did essentially was very racist in, in, in his um, talking about the bodegas he's and how he doesn't understand what they are and the importance, so on and so forth. And you've got this other emerging side that's now saying, yo, cancel culture, y'all are out of control. Like my man shouldn't have been fired um, over the TikToks. And so now there's an ongoing online debate about this, which I'm going to throw it to you and ask you, how do you feel about Bodega Bro? Should he have been fired? Should he not have been fired? What do you think about the TikToks and his comments about bodegas and, and the culture essentially is what he's talking about? Do you think they were racist? Do you think that was super cringe? Uh, do you think, like, I think that he just showed his privilege here and fam got to, gotta, you know, expand himself here and learn about how different people in different parts of the country and different communities live and thrive. I think that's really where it is for me. But I want to hear from you. So le let me know down in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like the video, smash the subscribe button, and we'll talk again real soon.